I'm going to show you a couple of clips of the adventure we were on when I managed to be given this piece of wood. And uh, the trip that we were on was wonderful, but getting this piece of wood from a friend was even better. So bear with me while I show you these clips. I think you'll enjoy them. And I'll be right back. This was our first campsite, if you call staying in a motorhome camping. It's the whole river in the whole rainforest. On the second day, we went for a hike along one of the trails in the rainforest, and we came along two beautiful black-tailed deer. They're so relaxed out there in their environment, and they feel safe, and they are protected there. As we walk along the trail, we come across many giant Sitka spruce trees. On a different hike, we came across this 14-foot diameter red cedar tree. So, after four days, we start heading home. And now we're about to reach the treat part of this video. And guess who's here? I think you all know Phil Anderson on the left from Shady Acres Woodshop. And that's me on the right. We had a wonderful visit, and Phil sent me home with some olive wood. Okay, so I had a wonderful visit up there with Phil, and he sent me home with some wood. And this is a piece of olive wood. And I know it's pretty hard. I went ahead and sawed some corners off. I knew I'd have to turn, and I flattened the bottom so that I could get this orientation. I've got it drilled for a worm screw. Let's get it mounted up and just see how hard this wood really is. Okay, we're all set. I have a feeling I'll have to grab a glove, but I'm going to start without it. And I have a 5 8 conventional grind bowl gouge with an extra long handle on it. And I think I'm getting about 450 RPMs. So, this will take a while and we'll probably have to skip through some of it. I'm starting to uh, really like this piece. It's too bad I had that big flat on there, but we can make use of that. Alright, found uh, something that should help. I'm going to just work on this corner until I get it where it's hitting more than one spot and we'll go back to the bottom. 530 RPMs. I think we want to leave that right there. See what we can do about smoothing this up. And we may have the shape that we're going to get. I think we're going to be doing lots of sharpening. I'm going to take a little more off right here and maybe try to blend that step into it. I've 
got a mark right here to cut a tenon, and the tenon's going to be three and a half inch diameter, and then have a dovetail going back the other way. Okay. See if I can get this marked on here without breaking my pencil lead. All right, that's good. I'm past this hole. So I need to flatten this out for the base and then continue cutting that and put a dovetail on it and we'll come back and smooth the rest of this up and we'll get it flipped around. I'm going to go over it with a negative rake scraper. I wouldn't be surprised if I cut some more on it when I flip it around. There were two places up on the top that just stuck up too high and they really started getting thin. So I decided to go ahead and cut those away and make it a little more blunt. And now I really think it looks a lot better. And as soon as I get it flipped around, I'll show it to you, and I think you'll probably agree with me. So this is the main reason why I went ahead and, and made this diameter smaller at the top, because I only had a couple areas, that, and they would have stuck up here, and this shape would have made them real thin. And I saw the grain showing up right in here, and I just wanted to keep chasing down so that that showed up. After all, this olive wood is all about the grain and I didn't mind losing that little feature here because I have this little canyon right there coming out and I've got this and, and I have all of that. So I'm pretty happy with that shape up there. So I'm going to probably get the tail stock out of the way and start hollowing it. And I think this nice set of jaws should hold that just fine. All right, we're all set to start hollowing. I'm going to start with a freshly sharpened half inch swept back bowl gouge. And I think I've got about you know, a thousand RPMs. See, I have all kinds of wavy action going on here. And eventually I'll be on the outside of this while I'm on the inside of that. Now that doesn't seem to be a pleasant thought. So, just to be a little safe, I'm going to get one of my hollowing tools and just establish that line. Alright, so this is a medium hollowing tool I have. I just think the idea of being out here and the tool wanting to kick this way and on the inside here, it just might not like that. This will make it much easier. That's hard. We're just now getting into the really nice grain. Alright, before I go any farther, I want to get these walls as, as 
smooth as I can. And yeah, this one here is thin because I have the big chainsaw cut right up on the top there. If I can use this as a scraper and do that. Uh, see if we can get the center out of this and get down to the bottom and we'll be just about done. Okay, I'm going to live with a little thicker walls right here and a pretty thick bottom. It's exposed a pretty good sized crack right there. And it does almost get to the, to the underside. And there are cracks on the underside. This is as far as I dare go with it. I don't think it's going to fly apart, but I'm not going to take that chance. And I think it's still going to look nice, but I will use my negative rake scraper to finish cleaning up this area. And uh, the rest of it isn't really that bad. It's actually pretty smooth, other than going across the crack here or there, but I'm going to try to clean those up and make them look a little nicer. So that's about it. I'm going to get all this sawdust out of here now and probably sand it tomorrow. It's getting uh, late in the day, and oh, I do see daylight back here. Well, you know, there's no way I could give up on this piece. I uh, traveled to the ways to get it, and it was such a great time that this piece has to be finished. So, see you tomorrow morning. All right, it's time to sand. I actually think it looks pretty good. I did fill that bigger crack actually two of them, with black CA. And I'll show it to you once we're done, but I didn't like the crack in there even when I was power sanding. Plus, it was a feather edge crack. It wasn't one that went straight through. So we'll talk about that later, but now let's sand it. And I'm going to start with 80 grit. And I had to, uh, I made this a while back, but I made an extension for my sander because this irregular edge would be hitting the body of the sander. So let's go ahead and sand it about 400 RPMs. That works good now. And I actually had tried to sand it with that big crack in there. And because like I say it was a tapered crack, it kept grabbing the disc and that's not fun. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding this up to 400 and I'll do the outside just like this. And then we'll put some finish on it. And I'll probably show you the finish on the outside because you can see it a lot better than the inside. So I will see you pretty soon. Got the inside done 
and actually I think that's going to have the most beautiful grain but we still have it on the outside. So now I'm going to put the sanding sealer on the outside and now you'll get to see how pretty this wood is. I changed my mind the outside's equally as pretty as the inside. This part here that doesn't make you think of olive wood is actually incredible looking. It looks like stone, especially right there. That is really nice. And you can see I did use the black CA in that big crack here. This one was of concern of the piece deciding to be more than one piece. And it held together just fine. So, we are almost all the way around. That is really going to be pretty. Oh yes, I really like it. So, I'll tell you what, I'll get the rest of the finish on and we'll come back and cut the tenon off. I'll see you a little later. Okay, let's remove the tenon. So removing this tenon really had me concerned. I don't know how many times I stopped, but it was so many it was hard to piece this video together. Okay, I'm going to have to stop and have a look at this. I know for a fact that underneath this nub there's a crack and the bottom's only about 3 sixteenths thick right there. So I stopped. I didn't like how it looked. I know there's a crack on the inside and it was getting thin. So I did cut it off and look at there. That crack was working its way through and I'm really happy I didn't try to cut any more off. I'll get some finish on it and I'll be back and show you. Well, here it is. One beautiful piece of olive wood. Look at that. It's just spectacular. I like that area a lot. The wood's really hard. Really hard. And I had some pretty good sized cracks in it. So it made for some slow turning. Finish 7 inches in diameter. 5.5 inches tall. And the base is 5 inches. At the top my wall is 3 8 but it gets thick really fast. And the main reason that it got thick is this, where there was a chainsaw cut, it's only about 3 16 right in the thinnest spot. But I think it's just fine. It's got heft to it. I think olive wood is pretty heavy anyways. But that's one of my favorite spots right there. Looks like someone took a texturing tool and did that afterwards. It's just perfect what that chainsaw did to it. It looks great. I finished it with two coats of shellac based sanding sealer and two coats of shellac. And I used the fine scotch bright in between each coat and then on the final buffing I used the white scotch bright which is ultra fine and that's all I did to the finish. And I think for this particular piece of wood that's the kind of finish I would want to put on it. Yes, it's full of cracks for sure. Kind of adds to it really, especially right here. It has a spidering effect. And the big crack that ran all the way up through here, I filled it with the black star bond and I think it looks pretty good there. You saw in the video where I met up with Phil and he gave me the wood. That was a great time. But Phil's done a video showing us together the day we met. I'll put a link in my video in the description so you can look that one up. If you've not watched Phil, you're in for a real treat. Phil is the master of odd pieces. Check him out. And thanks again to Phil for this wonderful piece of wood. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, I read them all. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I have a new one out. 
It would also be great if you could share my videos around. Thanks to all of you who are subscribed to my channel. It means a lot to me. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. I do many types of turnings from segmented work to natural turnings from pieces of trees and I put out videos weekly. Thanks again. Until the next time, see you later.